on the list we have nina kravitz isn't allowed to wear braids according to the social media this is a weird one it's something that i'm happy that it seems that most people on the scene have kind of seen the story and kind of like rolled their eyes at it which i'm happy about because of i think council culture and all the wokeness stuff that was happening nowadays with social justice warriors just people in general activism activists and stuff it's interesting if you look at it for if you kind of zoom out and look at look at who it's affecting it only affects certain groups of people it doesn't seem to really affect people in the hip-hop industry you don't really get it a lot in the uk rap industry you don't really get it a lot in the black twitter world um you don't really get it a lot in the des- no, design world you have got people that have been booed out for saying crazy shit fashion not so much and also electronic music i think they've tried a few times to kind of do this kind of to kind of pull up people on weird things and so far so so far the only person that's really got it vakula obviously with his comments um towards the big group of female djs that kind of stopped some of his bookings um the other dude i forgot his name who had a real big trouble and they kind of cancelled his panel discussion talk and people were protesting him and him do it the ade ade guy i forgot his name from last year keesling is it keebling keesling one of those kind of dudes but so far no one's really been cancelled in in electronic music even fucking um jack master right he did what he did a few a few a couple of years ago was it last last year at the festival and he didn't really get cancelled right he's now in basically it looks like he's kind of moved to ibifa or he's moved to europe and since he's just playing gigs in europe he's not coming to i don't think he's come to the uk yet since that happened really so he seems really happy he's doing this thing there but no one's really got cancelled no one's career has completely been stopped and been they've been told look you're not gonna make money in the scene again because you made one mistake it doesn't really work that way so i was surprised that um said people try to go out nina kravitz because if anyone has survived every kind of peak and valley of cancel culture has been in the kravitz sir right? from the whole bar thing to her just being an attractive woman she's always been kind of consistently getting you know bullets and arrows daggers are thrown at her she's always kind of really um i think all things considered she's kind of read it out really well she's kind of responded kind of very measured or kind of ignored things and she's kind of let it all kind of you know uh wash off her back really kind of what off that's back really not really seem that bothered about it but this one i don't really get in that regard right so this article is the following from resident advisor nina kravitz faced accusation of racism over appropriating cornrows and insensitive comments on twitter which is nuts right so if you look at the title essentially she wore cornrows for an event or something or to promote a pro uh, an ep i don't know whatever it's a hairstyle and essentially she got criticized for doing the hairstyle so you're not allowed to have cornrows if, if you're if you're if you're not black and also she got persecuted or you know told off or uh piled on upon social media because of her comments on twitter because she didn't take it seriously because she had like a, a bit of a dry tone it's like come on man why would you take something like this seriously i wouldn't if i was nina kravitz but let's look let's read it and kind of make an opinion of it at the bottom so here's the following it's it's interesting as well though because you look at you look at her how she's wearing a chrome rose you see loads of MMA fighters with the same thing, right? When they're fighting, because obviously they don't want their hair to get pulled or to get caught up in stuff. So every MMA fighter gets their hair braided. I don't see it. I don't hear anyone else saying that that's cultural appropriation, right? What? Because if they did, I, I bet you any money. If, if people did say something about it being cultural appropriation, the the mixed martial arts governing body, whatever it may be, or UFC would definitely buckle and get girls to start wearing fucking uh, scullies and shit instead to kind of keep their hair down. I bet you they would do that, which is absolutely nuts. Anyway, let's continue. So. The, Rus- the Russian producer's refusal to back down amidst criticism over the photo of her hairstyle led to accusations and counter accusations of racism, which is absolutely nuts. Imagine being accused of racism because you don't want to say sorry for having her cane rolls. It's like, it's just absolutely bizarre. Nina Kravitz is facing backlash from comments Sam now deleted she made on social media. The Russian producer posted selfies of her hair braided in cornrows on Twitter and Instagram early on Saturday morning, October 26th. Look at, look at Resident Advisor being fucking messy and, st- you know, saying the time and the date and the fucking when she put the cornrows. Who cares, man? Bloody hell. Kravitz was quickly, quickly called out for cultural appropriation as the style is deeply connected to black hair in history. And she replied, I can wear whatever I want. Thank you. Which is very true. I definitely agree with that. Uh... <laughs> and this here's a kind of a screenshot of her with the cane rolls and somebody tweeted on the comments i think just as a joke no nina we white people can't wear corn rolls culture preparation and she said i can wear whatever i want nina kravitz uh nos vemos in space ibifa uh what does it say here uh see you in space at miami at start at 7 a.m right and she's in miami hot place maybe you want to give your hair a bit of rest get it in braids i don't know whatever just you just want to have your hair in braids fuck it i don't care um 
the label head responded to criticism in another deleted tweet saying, I'm not white European. Braids are part of my culture. Kravitz comes from a uh, uh city of Serbia, north of Mongolia. She then posted a screenshot from her Quara entry, which claims that nobody owns braids because it was connected to Vikings, Romans, Eskimos, and other cultures. That, and that should be the end of it, right? So if you're if you're picking up a, a Quora article that says the, that that kind of basically um confirms our suspicions and tells you that no one owns cornrows and why the fuck are people making a big deal out of it and here's a sense here's the so-called quora article right which again you can't take all these things seriously and some people might you know make up the comments and stuff but for the most part quora is pretty well regarded the people that do respond on there are very fine for the most part there are academics who kind of have a little bit more knowledge on the said subject and aren't just people on twitter you know uh knee-jerk reacting to things because they don't have nothing else better to do so this is the uh, the query on quora it says the following is braiding hair uh, culture appropriation? And this is Michael Jacobs, who is a BA in psychology and an MA in anthropology, a lifelong student of human foibles. Is, so I'm going to take this guy's opinion more so than some random person on Twitter, right? Some white dude with grey hair who seems like he reads a lot of books. Cool. He says the following. I can't imagine how it could be. The technique of braiding hair is found in multiple cultures worldwide. The Vikings, other Europeans did it too, and Eskimos too. Native Americans did it. Asian Romans and Greeks and Middle Easterns did it. Chinese, Japanese, Korean people did it. Senators and the British Navy did it. And of course, Africans did it too, in a wide variety of styles. Nobody owns braiding. Um, the only way in which I could see a particular form of hair braiding as culture preparation is if some specific styles have some special meaning to a particular culture. Whereas, let me say, I don't know, if you see a, a white dude with fucking dreadlocks, for the most part, people kind of look down upon them. You know, because it comes from a, a mostly of a Rastafarian religion background, which is mostly associated with the Caribbean culture. Cool, but for the most part, braiding your hair down just seems like a a, a convenient approach to kind of managing your long hair in some regards. Especially if you're a Viking, right? I can't imagine fighting um, in Viking in Viking times like they do in a show Vikings with your hair flowing in the fucking wind and shit is probably practical it probably might be beneficial to maybe have a headband on maybe braid your hair in some way shape or form or maybe to make you more look more menacing or to maybe slim it down the profile of your head so you can fit your helmet on it whatever it's just a convenient approach to do it or maybe or maybe there's some something tied intrinsic to your tribe right you get your braid head braided in a certain pattern and whatever it may be but to say it's owned by a particular culture is nuts it's hair like what so why people can't get fades like why wouldn't they uh, so the following so uh, the, uh, so um, the only thing I can find the only one which I can find particular form of hair braiding is cultural preparation is if it's some specific style has some special meaning to a particular culture and it had been adopted by non-members of that culture in a disregard of special uh, or taboo or restricted or holy meaning that had applied um, I know some people try to argue that dreadlocks fit that description but they too existed for thousands of years in a variety of cultures long before Rastafarian culture made it one of their signature symbols okay cool so again Rastafarian culture co-opted this hairstyle right into their kind of religion or their kind of culture right, which is mainly associated with Jamaica and some parts of the Caribbean but existed prior to Rastafarian so again not where we don't own it right is it a bit corny to see somebody wearing braids or see someone wearing cornrows that isn't black or white, that isn't black or mixed race or whatever it may be? Yes, in some regard. Right? When you see those, when you see the little girls on the beach get hair, their hair braided and putting beads when they're on the beach and shit, it can look a bit, it can look, it can look a bit silly. But so what? The girl's nine years old. She's on holiday. Let her braid her hair and have some fun, right? Just relax. Um, and, and to end it, it says, if you have a particular braiding style in mind, perhaps a quick look up of the history of the style as a cultural feature, and also in terms of its aesthetic, might be a good idea if, if you desire to avoid disrespecting another culture's icons. And again, why would you do all that stuff just because of a hairstyle? Like, go and fuck yourself. Honestly, it's not that serious. But let's go back to the article. So, people are basically mad more at Nina Kaz because she just didn't want to say sorry. So here's a so it says the following. Um, she also um, um, following on the for the article. Um, so she then posted a screenshot from Quora, which I kind of read out to you just now, um, which claims that nobody owns the hair of hair braiding because it was also connected to Vikings, Romans, Eskimos, other cultures. But it does not account for the current reality that Black people are often discriminated against because of their hair. So what? So again. So the, they keep moving the goalposts. So they're saying that you can't have braids, right? Because it's a it's a, a specific thing only um, limited to black people. I don't agree with that. It's fucking bizarre. Get the fuck out of here. Cool. That argument's been completely debunked because we now have got a historical reference from a, his, his, from a historian, an anthropologist, right? Someone that is studying all these old societies and he's basically told us, no, cultures all around the world have their form of braiding. Braiding isn't specific to a particular region or a particular race of people. Fine. 
Then they move the goalposts and say, oh, okay, well, then it's because black people, if they wear braids, they're seen as thugs and, and bandits or gangsters, but white people aren't. We can't do nothing about that, unfortunately. It's sad, but we can't do nothing about it. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing with uh, kids that wear fucking low backs, right? And their trousers hang off their bum. For the most part, if you see a white kid wearing that, you're not going to be as threatened as maybe seeing a black kid wearing that. It's just what it is. What can you do? Is it, am I asking a black kid to change so in order to see fits in with the white world? No, unless he wants to live in that white world. I'm asking a white guy to kind of change in order to kind of not offend the black people. No, do what you want to do. Unfortunately, different people have different... Um, what you call, what, how do you call it? We're not even different. We will have to deal with different burdens in our lives. We, it, the life can't just be fair and even playful. That isn't going to exist. We will have different burdens, whether it's from our history of our family, whether it's personality traits, whether it's quirks, whether it's interest, whether it's um, friends that we hang around with, whether it's our occupation. We will have our burdens we have to bear and we have to make the most out of it. We have to make the best out of it as we can in the short time we have on, have on earth. To waste time debating and arguing over these minute details and to making sure people will recognize the different inadequacies and different injustices or different areas. So before they do this, it's just it just wastes so much time, so much valuable time that actually could be uh, put more towards maybe educating everyone in general about stuff like this hairstyles where it comes around from all over the world. And then so people have a better understanding of why they're doing that particular thing. Right. That might be cool. But to seek permission from a particular culture. Oh, by the way, you what? You're going to walk up to a fucking black, random black guy, a woman in the street and say, hey, by the way, it's OK if I get my hair braided. Do you give me permission? And they write a note for you and then you can carry that in your pocket and show people around. Hey, um, this woman uh, gave me permission to do like, no. Wouldn't it be better if we just all acknowledge that we all have a shared culture, a shared history, right? And so that, so that when someone says, oh, wow, I love your hairstyle, you can then suddenly say something like, yeah, by the way, this could, this started there. I got it from here. This inspiration. I just see that braid up pattern. You have, something to, you have some weight in it. Similar to like when you see a random kid wearing a, uh, an Iron Maiden t-shirt, but they can't name five Iron Maiden songs. It just kind of breaks your heart a little bit. Like, come on, man. If you're going to wear the shirt, at least try and learn about the band. Same thing with the braids. Just try and learn about the history. But are we going to seek promotion? permission i swear is that what we ask you is that the fight i'm trying to ask for as a black dude no we have more we have bigger bigger things to kind of fight honestly like this is the lowest common denominator and a fight that doesn't make any sense too she's a dj right how can she be like by honestly by proxy how can you be racist as a dj it's gonna be really difficult to be a, a fervent racist right where are you gonna go to go dj what fucking italy every year like <laughs> not not again you know it's a joke obviously but where are you gonna go you're a DJ. It's really hard to do that. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, anyway, so there's a following. Um, so that's weird, right? And then here's a quote um, from somebody called Extinct Damon. Extinct Damon. I don't know who this is. Probably a producer of some sort, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Um, this person was really angry and said, black people literally get denied jobs or harassed by the law enforcement for wearing their hair in brazen locks. I don't know what, what, what we can do about that at the moment, right? What do we do? Educate the people that are wearing braids and locks so they don't be antagonistic towards police. Educate police officers not to profile people that have braids and locks. Um, get people to cut off their braids and locks. I don't know. What is the, what is the solution there? This isn't the solution. But the solution lies in some of those questions that no one really wants to ask or to really answer. Figure out why... I don't know, figure out why exactly people with brazen locks are more suitable to getting pulled out. Figure why the police are more, the, I, I'm sure the statistics that prove the police are more uh, more willing or more prone to arresting or to convicting people that have brazen locks or live from the impoverished areas. Maybe looking at why those areas are impoverished. Like there's areas that are more of interest and have more of a activism slant or more opportunity to do activism as opposed to kind of going around and fucking pointing out every, every white person's got braids like really that's not where the issue is here um y'all's arguments of uh defending nina kravis are weak and lack an almost um what's that an instrumentable understanding of context and nuance okay cool whatever <laughs> So to so the following year, it carries on. The photos also spurred discussion about the little, the title of Nina Kravitz 2011. Oh my God. This is, this is disgusting, man. So she gets braids, right? And then they're trying to pull out a 2011, 2011 track that she made called Ghetto Kravitz. On Monday evening, October 28th, Kravitz quoted one of those critical tweets and added, this is racism. And should not be tolerated. Plus, Polish Jews will be very surprised to discover that the word ghetto <laughs> exclusively belongs to African American culture. She has since deleted that tweet too. Nina Kravitz has been a problem, but nobody wants to have that conversation yet. Somebody uh, tweeted here having a title like Ghetto Kravitz and then having cornrows. The girl needs to get cancelled already. Why? I don't care. I, I don't care. I'm just saying what y'all are thinking. 
tired of these white girls and techno scene disrespectful i don't understand this at all this is really and again maybe this is again um this is again the um, the unintended consequences of raising a profile up of you know the black madonna nina kravitz Peggy Goo, Charlotte DeWitt, Amelia Demen, Amelia, Amelia Lenz on one level. And then the girls like this woman and shit, you know, on another level, right? Um, they represent kind of the alt, kind of, you know, um, more of the queer slant in the scene. Maybe, I don't know, whatever it may be called. Like, that's the unintended consequence of raising up those girls I mentioned. Because what happens is that they essentially look like, you know, they're essentially like the girl version of the all boys club, really, right? Um, they're predominantly all white. Um, or look or white looking caucasian looking and and predominantly come from a certain kind of background whatever it may be called cool right um maybe except for nina kravis and black madonna they've all kind of been in the scene for maybe 10 years maybe tops but they've completely blown up right over the last couple of years and the unintended consequences of it is that there are loads of girls on the scene who come from um you know marginalized communities or un unrepresented communities within electronic music space whether it's to be people of color or you know whatever whatever you term those group of people who are not white who probably look at those girls and think what the fuck right i play as good or as better as those girls um maybe you're not as pretty as them or you're not as um what you call it social media you, you don't have that social media tendency as those girls and you don't get given the same opportunities so that's the unintended consequences of raising up those groups of girls and not looking at the other bits and bobs of it and that's what happens that's the danger of um pointing out people based on what's in between their legs and then give them a platform what should be happening in electronic music is that we should be having a uh equal representation all across the board not just because of women or men or because of people's uh, sexual orientation or the color of their skin but in terms of everyone in general it should be reflective in a dj line sometimes you go to festivals and shit and you're like fucking hell man these guys have no there's absolutely no um um research no discovery of new artists the same old people get booked again and again and again at festivals this is not even coming from like a, a selfish dj point of view just from like a punter you try to see something more interesting like show me something new and they don't do it instead they kind of do these draconian things like field day we're gonna have 50 percent women on the lineup it's like that's not what you want you want equal representation because what ends up having 50 percent women is that naturally if you're a big festival like field day you're just gonna end up booking the highest selling women anyway right the, the ones that actually bring the most amount of people to the festival the ones that sell the most tickets the one with the most social media following and then again that that, that is just copying the old boys club and then making sure it's women it just does it's so interesting to see how this stuff is evolving um but the girl the girl Kravitz stuff is just insane i have no idea where this person's coming from as if like a 2011 track a 2011 track has anything to do with what's happening what's actually happening now with the uh, nina Kravitz and her cornrows it's just absolutely disgusting to be honest in that regard in my opinion personally um i've not actually heard this track actually let, let me see, let me hear what this track actually sounds like i'm not really familiar with too many of nina Kravitz's productions let me hear what this actually sounds like get Kravitz. it's probably pretty good isn't it is that oh she's got a vi music video for it too actually but nina's an og as well man and all the girls that should be getting pillared in the scene this is not the person you should be going after like <sighs> I don't get it. I just don't get it. Let's hear, 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 let's hear this song. Is the guy wearing a joker mask? So it's not. So. Oh yeah, I've heard this before. Yeah, this is really good. Man. And it's got people. And again, look right. So people are claiming so she's get she's kind of um what's what's that word called? She's um culture appropriating. But this video of Ghetto Kravitz has a black girl in it, um, has a white dude in it, breakdancing, right? Again, a respect for the culture that it's probably coming from with the you know the sample it's got from there's kind of like you know a hip hop influence there, maybe a, a Chicago influence there, right? Maybe a Duke influence there. Um some you know, again, respect for the culture. Um you've got a white person there that obviously respects the tenants of hip hop and is kind of, you know in the whole breakdancing scene a black girl with a massive afro doing some cool stuff in a nightclub it's a pretty respectful video it looks like so good she's amazing i don't know what people are trying to cancel her for that's not a person i want to cancel in that regard but again i would not want to cancel anyone it's just a ridiculous statement in general let's go back to the article here uh where is it where is it where is it let's go back here it's coming here right 
to what happened in the end. She didn't. She, I, don't, I don't think she deleted. She did. She deleted the tweets, but she didn't apologize for the video, which I'm happy for. It was for the braids, and it continued. Kravitz um, cited a story that describes that the ghetto um, Nazis forced the ghettos Nazis forced Jewish people into during World War II as a defense for the ghetto Nazi. It was then pointed out that it was unlikely her techno music was inspired by these cultures and not Black America, where the genre originated. Or, or originated. If you talk to a person today and ask which culture does the term ghetto mostly apply, they'll probably say Black culture. Right? This person said historically. Yes, it was an Italian word for where Jews were forced, like like Venice, like Venice. Um, also, in World War Two, Venice. Sorry, are you kidding me? Did you read history at all? Second World War, Jews living in ghettos all over Europe, uh, the streets. So, so people are pointing out again. Nina Kravitz then called criticism, describing her as white woman racist. She exchanged tweets with this woman founder, Frankie. Or oh, she's not. She's not to be messed about with the Kaiser Hutchinson, in which Kravitz accused. Um, Hutchinson of sharing terribly racist and bullying tweets of her on time of, on her timeline. Hutchinson replied, "If you want to pretend that's bullying instead of critique, go ahead. If you think if 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 I think you need to take your own advice, Nina, take a moment and listen." So she says the following: Frankie is went at her from can't believe you're actually going to the extent of co-opting experience racism as way defending. A discussion of white privilege as a black person who had been supporter of your this is sad. Luckily for you, your yes fans will make you think this is okay. You think that spreading hate, aggression, separation, bullying in our scene and validating reverse racism is okay? I don't think that's okay. That's not the values that our scene is built upon. She says the following, BS. There are tons of other Terry racist tweets all over your bullying tweets, Frank, which is quite true. She, she, she's not bullying, but she's a little bit spicy on the whole social media, the founder of this woman. Um, please just take a moment and realize what you are uh, signing into. Frank says the following, I don't know what person and even, I don't know that person, even if I did, I have no shame in anyone from this woman calling out white privilege. That's what we stand for. If you want to pretend that bullying instead of um, critique, go ahead. I think you need to take your advice and uh, listen. In reply, Hutchinson tweet, Kravis accused this woman founder of being an actual racist, insisted he tweet. She continued, I come from a remote Asian city and all my life I have very little to do with talking. I, have very, I had very little to do with what you're talking about. You have no right to speak to me this way. Hutchinson said, you're in over your head. Please read a book. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Don't surprise. Aksan Mahmed, Max said, called out hypocrisy and Kravis explaining the, disco, the techno scene values to Hutchinson. I've done enough to ask for our scene and have gone through a lot of bullshit to bullying to be where I am. Kravis responded, you're being extremely arrogant right now. Listen, I've done enough, which I agree with. Soon after Kravis to lead the tweets, give a response, it's going crazy, out of proportion, I'm not a racist. But yeah, she did, she did, she did not, she did not, apologize which i'm happy about right again i think in this case it's a haircut i think even if she's ignorant enough not to know the history of braids i think if you're someone like a frankie from this woman i think you just have to like i wouldn't say white privilege but white ignorance is allowed people are allowed to kind of just co-op to hairstyle or even co-op just you know copy a black hairstyle if they want to a, a, a black a hairstyle that's more ascribed to black people and just do it because they just feel like it looks cool um, I'd much rather that than her cower and apologize, and then and then what? She hasn't really learned the lesson. She does that if you know if you're Frankie and she apologizes, you know you don't believe her anyway. So I'd much rather they have this dialogue. People are able to see where Frankie stands and able to see where Nina Kravitz stands, and it's up to you, the fan of the electronic music scene. It's up to you, the fan of both these women, to decide which side of the fence you fall on. Or if you're like me and you just love both parties, you love this woman, you love what Frankie's done with this woman, and you also love Nina Kravitz and what she's done, you don't care. You sit in the middle. You acknowledge the, the spat they're having because there's two women arguing and, you know, as a dude, to get involved in that is really weird. But you just let them have the spat, let them air it out in public, and that's it. But no one gets cancelled. No one starts sending fucking screenshots to her agent or to the clubs that she Nina Kravitz is playing at so she gets her gigs cancelled. No one does all that kind of nonsense stuff. Have a, have, have a disagreement of a point of view of, of how you see the world. Fair. But don't try and get people cancelled. Don't try and ruin their livelihood. Don't try and get them kicked out of the scene. Don't try and uh, besmirch their credibility or reputation. Maybe point out the deficiencies in their thinking. Cool. But it's then it's up to us as consumers to decide. Because if consumers cancel you, that's okay. If consumers decide, you know what? I don't, I don't like your point of view. I'm not going to buy into what you do. I'm going to kind of stay away from you. Totally. Cool. But panels should not be going out and sending screenshots to booking agents and to clubs and festivals to get people cancelled. That is not on. I just don't like it. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Look what happened to fucking um, Jackmaster. Right? The scene but effectively booted him out in a nice way. Right? They said, look, that's not cool. Especially when the whole details of the issue came out. He went away 
and like a grown up took a full accountability for it did some self work um it seems like he's repaired himself and he's maybe got a bit sober and he's a bit more clear headed he's moved away like for for most part i haven't seen him in london in ages i haven't seen him play here in ages um i think he played recently maybe at fabric or something like that but he's kept a really low profile and he's done the necessary work needed to kind of reintegrate himself back into the scene and everyone that's seen him pictured around are people that i think would hold him up to that right or would kind of make sure they call him out on his shit people like steph trucks and all the other other dudes and I don't think they would just stand by and let him kind of you know carry on doing what he did before so the fact that he's standing next to these people i have to assume they've had those hard conversations and he's shown them within his actions or whatever he's done that he's a changed person and over time us as punters can also decide whether or not we want to accept him back again when he does his next headline show at printworks right that is where we decide but we shouldn't be going out and cancelling them like that and just sending out tweets no no no. you decide with your feet and your money but you don't go out and and cancel them by going to the event bookers and managers and, the, and festival organizers that's not on i don't think that's cool it's so weird and i never got that thing if you don't like what someone says just don't listen to what they say like i despise carl cox after he, he blamed the london riots in the early in kind of you know the 2000 uh london riots remember during the resident advisor exchange you tried to ask him about the london riots he, he started mentioning um it has something to do with the kids listening to too much r&b and hip-hop like fuck off you know what i mean that's why i knew it was a, a complete bounty but again I just don't support him by not going to his things. I don't watch his videos. We just let him be, let him be who he is. But I'm not gonna clip that, clip that little clip from his friends of Andrew Exchange and send it to people and say, "Oh, look at how dumb he is. He's ignorant. He doesn't get black culture." No, just let him live his life. It doesn't, it doesn't align with my values and the way I see stuff. Cool, but I'm not gonna go ruin his whole life in order to kind of make my life feel better. That's ridiculous. But again, what a weird, what a weird topic, isn't it? What a weird topic. Nina Kravitz can't get braids, like. Okay, that's the fight you want to fight, yeah? The braids thing. 